All right, so this is gonna be the agenda for my fast lightning talk. I'll give you a brief introduction about myself. I'll tell you why second impressions matter too. You always hear about making good first impressions, but second impressions are just as important. I'll explain what do I mean by putting docs in a corner, um, how you can help no matter what your job role is. You don't have to be a, a, a tech writer or a documentation writer to improve the docs. And I will give you a tool to help you uh, fly in this case or make better docs. So brief introduction about myself. My name is Adrienne Moherrick. I've been with Cisco for 10 years. Um, I've been on the DevNet team um, the whole time. So I'm one of the original members. Um, this, this scarf here is, is vintage. It's a <laughs> you cannot get these just anywhere. Uh, very proud of it. Um, let's see. My background is in uh, RESTful APIs and documenting those APIs. And the examples I'm going to give you today about Im improving documentation is specific to RESTful APIs. But what you'll learn is applicable to documenting uh, pretty, thing, pretty much anything that's technical. So what do I mean by second impressions matter too? Imagine you just bought a new phone. How are you feeling? You're pretty excited. You know, uh, you turn it on, you log in, you, um, <clears throat> well, I have an iPhone, so I just like import all of my <laughs> apps and data <laughs> into my new iPhone. And it's pretty fun and exciting, and you're like, oh, I can, you know, do this or do that. And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty good that you have a pretty good first impression. Um, so what happens when uh, you're working on it and then all of a sudden you get stuck? Maybe it's, you're having trouble logging in or something. Um, what do you do? Do you ask a friend? Do you Google it? Do you just keep pressing buttons until it works? Um, and then I'd like, to, I'd like you to think about how are you feeling at that time when you get stuck Ugh. and you don't know what to do. Um, and just think about how, how you're feeling in that moment. And I want you to apply that journey to your developers who are reading your documentation. So in the beginning, it's like this, uh, oh, there we go. This uh, really nice, magical forest. You're exploring something new for the first time. And then all of a sudden, it turns into this like haunted, creepy little path uh, when you get stuck and you can't figure something out. And a lot of times when developers are, uh, you know, maybe trying out a new API for the first time and they get stuck, they'll go to your documentation. And they're already going into those docs, maybe feeling a little frustrated. So don't make it worse by making the docs even harder to understand or harder to read. Um, this is a quote. Uh, taken from the state of the Octoverse. Uh, documentation is critical, but often underinvested. Um, pop quiz question Who do you think wrote the state of the Octoverse? Anybody? No? GitHub. So you know the little octopus thing? Uh, they, yeah, they write every year they come out with the state of the Octoverse. Good, good trivia question. All right, and then Postman. Um, who here has used Postman before? Yeah, a few of you, nice. They also have a state of the API report and they said reliability and documentation remained among the top four factors uh, for if a, de a developer decides to use an API. So great, we know if you want a better second impression, I'm here to tell you, release better documentation. That's great, but you wanna know more. So let me tell you how docs are put in a corner. Example one, they're thought of at the last minute. Uh, maybe a, a new release is about to go out and, um, I, and you've got 10 days left and you're like, uh-oh, we, we need to update the documents. Um, a lot of times the documents, I like to say, is thrown over the fence to the tech writer. So the engineering team, you know, they have some notes put together and then they hand it over to the tech writer and they're like, go ahead and fix it up, make it better. 
and the engineering team wipes their hand. They're like, I'm done. <laughs> you go figure it out. Um, not, not, not a good strategy here. Uh, and then there's no maintenance plan usually. Okay, so a release is going out. You have new docs. Um, but then once the release goes out, nobody works on improving the docs or updating it. Um, nobody's looking at the community forums or tickets that come in and seeing what questions there are. Um, that should be a continuous process of seeing where the community is having trouble with your documentation. And then you should be updating your docs along with it. And I went online to, and I tried to find a diagram that shows what this last minute scenario of technical documentation looks like. It's this. Um, so this is the point where you're like, oh, crap, we need to release documents. And then it is uh, a giant mess. And then all of a sudden, you release documents really fast. And that's usually what it looks like. It's like a huge sprint at the very end. Uh, to get those docs out. Um, so usually, how does it turn out? Well, you usually, you'll publish the documents on time because you have a timeline, and then you move on to the next thing. But if you actually look at the docs a little more closely, you'll discover um, maybe there's an unclear developer story, meaning uh, your, the documentation doesn't clearly state the purpose of the API or why anybody would use it. Maybe there aren't real world uh, use cases or examples. And also, maybe it's not working as documented. Maybe the API, maybe you have to do something differently than what it says in the document. So these are some bad examples that I have come across in documentation. Um, literally seen the sentence, you can CRUD these resources, period. That's how they explained what the use of an API is. Um, you can do the same thing on the product interface. You can programmatically interact with the product. Yeah, that's what an API does. I need you to tell me more. I need you to explain it. I need you to go another step further. So imagine um, you, have, there's a, you have a virtual deck of cards, and you have an API for the virtual deck of cards. What would a good description look like? What would a good developer story, what would good use cases look like? for this deck of cards API. How would you explain it? And here's a good example uh, of a good description of an API. An API to simulate a deck of cards. This API can be used to build card games of all types. See, this is nice. It kind of gives you a little bit of inspiration. It gives the developer inspiration. Ooh, I could, I could do any kind of card game with it, you know? New decks may be created using a single deck of 52 cards. OK, good. We're laying out the boundaries here. It's just a normal deck of cards. Um, or you could have multiple decks. And then it provides examples of the different things that you can do with this deck of cards. These are the real world use cases. So you, when, uh, when you're documenting an API or documenting anything, you want to be very clear, very simple. You want to be a little bit inspirational. And then you also want to provide real world use cases. So if you're thinking, well, how can I help? I'm not a tech writer. You can improve the docs and, uh, in, in different ways. Um, I, what I want you to do is pick a role here, whether a product manager, an engineer, or a writer. Pick a role that's most closely aligned to what your role is today. And then I will tell you how you personally can improve those docs based on that role. If you're a product manager, you should be communicating to the uh, entire team the developer story. Everybody needs to be clear, what is the purpose of this API? Um, you need to start, uh, start look, uh, you know, writing the structure for the docs at the very beginning of the API lifecycle. You want to communicate a versioning strategy. So a lot of times, you release a new API for the first time. Nobody thinks about the versioning strategy. How are you going to version it? So start thinking about that in the beginning. And then also ensure that the team keeps updating the docs. Okay, It's not just a one and done and move on to the next thing. If you are an engineer, what does this mean? Use machine readable definition of API to generate reference docs. For example, if your documentation is about RESTful APIs, you should be uh, 
uh, writing an uh, open API specification doc, aka Swagger doc. You should not be manually typing out the definitions of each operation in a Word doc. <laughs> um, you need a, a Swagger doc for RESTful APIs. Um, you, as an engineer, you should implement a workflow that integrates updates from the, the API uh, and the engineering team from the, uh, and also the tech writers. So when the engineering team produces the open API specification doc, aka Swagger doc, then they hand it over to the tech writers to improve it. Those updates should also get updated to, um, to the source of the OAS doc. Um, and so that then when the engineering team ups, updates it again, uh, they already have the input from the tech writers. And you should clearly define successes and errors. Um, <laughs> not only be clearly defined, but be consistent. Um, don't have a, a you know a two let's say 200 201 you know those are the good okay successful ones and then have a text that's different than an, another successful one for the same API so use consistent uh, error codes throughout your API documentation and if you happen to be a tech writer um, what I what I want you to focus on is improving the descriptions and the examples a lot of times the engineers will provide you foobar examples. Please do not publish foobar examples. They are not helpful for the developer. Use real world examples. So if it was, you know, ID of, you know, one, two, three, then, um, then I know, okay, the characters are, are on numeric, but don't do ID is foobar if it's only a, a numeric value. Integrate community feedback, which is what I said before and right for the entry level. Um, Cisco loves acronyms, <laughs> uh, in case you haven't noticed. Um, please make sure you spell out those acronyms in your documentation. Not everybody knows this. I am actively working on Cisco to spell out those acronyms. <laughs> um, yes, it's, it's fun to, to, to say, like, um, ICE, IOX, uh, you know, all those, those fun product names, but let's spell them out in the documentation. So now, this is, this is the good stuff. This is the stuff that you've been waiting for. I'm gonna teach you how to fly. So I have created a uh, developer experience document checklist that's specific to RESTful APIs. Um, has nine different sections and it explains this is what you should be including in your introduction page. This is what you should be including in your getting started page for your document. Um, this is the bare minimum that you need for um, your uh, OAS document. And I actually have uh, tech writers on my team and developer advocates that I work with um, that use this checklist to review the documents before we publish onto the DevNet website. And it is available for you to download. So all you have to do is uh, scan this QR code, or um, which takes you to this URL, and you can download it. It's just a, an Excel file, and it's a great starting point for you uh, to to go off of to help improve your documents. But wait, there's more. Are you looking to improve API quality? Um, so our team has. Uh, delivered an open source tool called API Insights, and it will actually review your API's um, uh, spec file to verify that it is uh, compliant and it meets um, all guidelines, and it's open source and it's available on GitHub. We also have a dashboard for this tool, so you can easily um, score, look at the scores and reports of any issues that you have with your um, OAS document. And if you're interested in API Insights, it is available on GitHub. Um, you can go to the DevNet website here or go to the GitHub repo, and this is the QR code. And there's usually somebody, if you're interested in learning more about API Insights, in the Meet the Developer section, just on the other side of this wall, there's usually somebody always there to talk about API Insights. And that is all I have for today. Thank you.